from my perspective, what's important for us to do at this time is to set, set up a dynamic framework or to assist the Schuylkill Center in setting up a dynamic framework that is manageable, sustainable, but open-ended. And so I think that what we're really here to talk about is on the specific level what the Schuylkill Center can and should do in the immediate future, but in a broader way how places like this will operate in, uh, as Stacy put it, uh, in the long now. Part of the idea is not just the creation and not just the artistic expression, but the long term seeing that it will be taken care of by whomever may end up being here. It's a little bit hubris to think of us like NASA, but you know, everybody's like, why fund a space, uh, space program? Well, because that has a trickle down effect into so much of our lives about the investigation and the experimentation that then become day-to-day -day uses. So as an artist, are you investigating and experimenting in a way that then becomes translated into day-to-day -day cultural ways of life? For me, it's, it's less about thinking about art as an object that can inspire change, but more so about how artists think and how uh, designers think and how scientists think and how bringing those people together can inspire and promote uh, new ways of, of dealing with these challenging problems. It, it, it's, it's too much of a burden to pin onto one institution, but a place like this can offer a perspective that might stick with someone. It might provide just the right metaphor and uh, inspiration and, and hands-on practical skills or, or uh, uh, body memory that a, that a child will grow up with. And, and they'll look back and they'll say, ah, oh, that time that I was in the woods and we saw this thing happen and then the bullfrog made this sound and then splashed and disappeared and it was so quiet. That for me is, is, is what being in a place is all about. Or it, it could be something as simple as that. And, and those things are the things that our grandparents took for granted. It was part of, of what life was. And for a lot of people today, it's something they've, they've never experienced. The challenge is to just give nature half a chance so it can heal itself and, and do the majority of the work rather than thinking of it as a garden or something that's very going to be very manicured parklands. Um, but if you can make subtle interventions that do then allow the landscape to heal itself. And that's what I think is most exciting about any, any good restoration site. And this is tremendous potential here, tremendous.